Welcome to Hands Off. My name is Rad Hack and I am your host. And we are continuing our series on the troubled teen industry and institutional abuse. Tonight's guest, his name is Josh Welsh. And I am going to just kind of like stop right there and go right to him and have him introduce himself as we take a little bit of a twist in regards to, um, you know, his story and what took place when he was a little boy. So, Josh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So give us a quick little introduction just on who you are and where you're from and just kind of like, um, I, I think it would be great to fill people in on what age we're actually talking about when all of this began. Okay. <laughs> well, I am. F I was born in California, but I was raised between Utah and Nevada. I was a ward of the state of Nevada, uh, starting at the age of about four and a half. Uh, from there, I, um, they sent me to different. Well, I mean, four and a half is when I got sent to my first inpatient program, right. and uh, that was in Nev uh, in Utah uh, in Nevada at first. Uh, a place called Truckee Meadows Hospital, uh, now called West Hills. And from there, they moved me to Utah, Primary Children's uh, Medical Center, uh, Residential Treatment Center, Inpatient Psychiatry. And from there, I spent from the ages of about four and a half to I think about 12 uh, in their care. Uh, off and on, I spent about a year, I would say, outside of there when I was when I had one adoptive placement that tried to happen. Um, and can you expand upon your story um, from the point in which you know your er earliest memory and kind of highlighting what took place in these locations that you were at? Well, not really sure where to start. Uh, there's there's a lot of things I've been through. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to read a little bit. It's easier for me. Sure. Uh, my, at Truckee Meadows, when I first got my real taste of what it, it, it was going to end up being like for the next number of years, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know it at the time that uh, emotional abuse was really a thing. Uh, of course I was four, so of course not. Uh, I can't recall too much from such an early point, but suffice it to say, although I wasn't physically abused there, the institutional trauma really started at Truckee Meadows. And so I feel it's important to mention them. Uh, but it was once I got to primary children's that I started really experiencing discipline mm -hmm. or uh, being disciplined in ways that uh, were felt normalized then, but I have come to realize weren't so normal. Um, I used to spend long periods of time uh, being locked in timeout rooms or isolation rooms uh, for hours. And sometimes they would completely forget about me. Uh, I remember one time during Christmas, a Christmas party, everyone was in the gymnasium. I was up in the school area locked in the timeout room for the entire time. They told me they forgot about me. I remember that. It must have been around 11 when that happened. Um, they, for the most part, I'll be up front, for the most part, I don't have a lot of bitterness towards them because for me, they were my family. I literally grew up in a hospital, so they were my family. But part of the problem with that was kids are constantly leaving staff are constantly leaving so for someone like me who already felt abandoned by everybody constantly having everybody leave over and over again just added to trauma a lot mm -hmm. and added to my well i'll get into it in the end when i tell you how it's all affected me mm -hmm. but once i was there for a few years i went to a wednesday's child which is where they try to get children adopted. I must yes. have been about seven, I think. Um, I found this family that seemed great. They uh, ended up trying to adopt me, so they pulled me to their house. Uh, 
I was living with them. At first, it was great. They had their own son uh, that was their biological son who did not get along with me very well. And so he used to make up things to get me in trouble. And the parents would consistently just take his word. I can't really remember a time where they didn't take his word over mine. Mm. Uh, but I understand that it's their son. You know, Bio- biology makes it more difficult. Uh, but so they started taking me to treat to back to the RTC to get treatment. And it was called attachment therapy that they decided that they would start doing. Um, I'm not sure what, if you have any questions from there. No, I, 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 I'm following along. I, I, I just, um, you know, it, it, it really is upsetting and please continue. Okay. Well, in, for some reason, Nevada thought that sending me to Utah was a good idea. I don't really know why, uh, which is where primary children's was. I can assume that they sent me there because I had some psychological and emotional trauma that I was going through. Uh, so I can understand that. Uh, the It's hard to talk about the attachment therapy part. It's understandable. Um, do the best that you can. And, you know, if you need to take a breath or whatever, that's fine. All right. Thank you. Um, well, I've written it all out, and I think it would be easiest for me to, to follow along with what I've written. Uh, so give me just a moment to open that. I've only recently discovered what happened to me, the name of it at least. Sure. For many years, I had remembered it, and I had been really, really traumatized by it and held back in my mind, but I didn't realize it was abuse, nor what it was called. I tried sure. searching for it. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's common. Yeah, uh, and it really caught me by surprise. I only found out and learned more once I found a group called Attachment Therapy is Wrong. They oh. also go by ACT, which is uh, Advocates for Children in Therapy. Sure. Um, and then I was able to get some clarification on, what was, on how what was done with me was abusive. So, I'll explain it to you now. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Go ahead and explain exactly what that therapy consisted of. Okay. Well, I can't recall a lot of my memories because as anyone who grew up in the system knows, you're, you're often an unwilling test subject for medications, and those have made it difficult for me to remember a lot. So a lot of this is through records that I had and uh, a little bit that I can remember. Similar to other stories I've read about attachment therapy, there was a lot of emotional and physical abuse disguised as love and therapy. This is by far the most and the most emotionally and physically painful experience of my life. Worse than being molested, all the broken bones or stitches I've ever had. My experience involved the, my therapist, who was also the facility head, who in general I genuinely do have good feelings for. His name was Jim Anderson. Uh, along with at least one other therapist, I think her name was Regina, I don't know, uh, and staff, other staff. Uh, the staff were forcibly holding me down, pinning my arms to my side while they would roll me into blankets. They would roll me so the blankets were just above my head. And so I would be forced to look up at them in order to see. So I'd be forced to look into my attempted adoptive parents and therapist's face. Um, now my attempted adopted parents' names were Corey and Janet Jameson. Uh, who now work for Washette School District. <laughs> They would then proceed to have two staff lay on top of me to prevent me from wiggling or moving out of the blankets and hold me still. After I was secured, a third staff would remove my shoes and socks and start tickling my feet. This would last the entire time I was in the sessions. 
And these sessions ranged from an hour to three hours. It seemed to really depend on whether I was good or bad that week. Um, if you've never experienced prolonged tickling, it's only funny for about a couple minutes before it you can't breathe because laughing, it, it gets hard to, if you've ever laughed a long time, it's hard to breathe. And then it becomes into, it, it turns into a searing pain in your feet. It, I mean, a feather feels like a razor blade after a few minutes. And, and well, <laughs> it turns into a searing pain that doesn't relent and only seems to get stronger. So strong that you feel and pray that you're going to pass out, but you never do. It's torture to me in every sense of the word. And, and just to give us a little bit of, you're how old? Seven, eight? Uh, yeah, at the time I was about seven. Yeah. Uh, these particular sessions seem to happen uh, between the, for only about a year. I don't think they lasted a whole year. But there was other things in between that they did at that program that were impactful. This is just the big one, the big mm -hmm. story. Um, okay. Oh, at this point, James and James or Jim would instruct my then potential parents to take turns saying hateful things, saying everything that they could do to break me down, telling me that it's my fault my parents left me. Um, they would scream insults and tell me how much they hated me. They, I guess this is considered trauma bonding. The idea is they would break me down to a point of pretty much being an infant again. And then somehow this is supposed to make me attach myself to my adoptive parents. I don't know where they get this, their ideas. <laughs> I'm uh, glad you uh, said it because I, you there. know, uh, the answer to that is no. that they would force me to regress oh uh, he would have them do this inches away from my face while they were st while the staff was still tickling my feet they would force me to regress in tears in less than five minutes mm. they told me it was my fault my biological family didn't want me that i always messed up good things and was a waste of time and effort they would belittle me every in every imaginable way and laugh at me when I was crying. Not not my therapist, the parents. When I was crying and pleading to be released from the blankets because it was so hot. They would tell me I had to release my feelings, that I had to scream and yell back and let out all my anger and emotions, and then they would release me. However, when I would scream and do as they wanted, like I was already doing because of the pain I was in and what was happening, they still wouldn't let me out. They would simply laugh and continue doing what they were told to do by my therapist. It kind of seemed like sometimes they saw got enjoyment out of it. I don't know how they could laugh while this is happening without... I don't know. I just don't. Uh, I, don't I, I don't know either uh, because I mean, as as a parent, I like to see any. I mean, even if it's not my child, to see a child in torture, it would be upsetting to me. And you know, these are people that are talking about adopting you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what made. That's what ended up making it. Well, I'll tell you at the end how this yeah. dramatically... As a matter of fact, actually, Josh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to take a quick break. Um, when we come back, what I'd like you to do is is talk about like how you got out of there and what effects this has had you know, in your life today. And uh, we'll, we'll be back in like two minutes. Okay. I'll be right Hudson back. County. Still the same great faculty. At a community college ranked top 50 in the nation. Basically, we earn more and pay less. RCBC students are accepted at Rowan University after graduation. And get a bachelor's degree for around $30,000. Online and Mount Laurel students get a 15% Rowan University tuition discount. And many scholarship opportunities. So you earn more and pay even less. 
Rowan College of Burlington County. Your path to success. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But what does it take to strengthen our service members? What does it take to let them know that we stand behind them? Welcome back to Hands Off with my guest, Josh Welch. And uh, before we went to break, we were talking about the horrific treatment that he was uh, experiencing um, in the presence of his therapist and, and potential adoptive parents. My, my first question, Josh, as we, as we come into the second half, this is the part where I kind of like to ask um, some questions. Did they ever end up adopting you? No. Um, about six months later, they, uh, they started locking me in a room, a cement room, and I would be in there for hours at a day at a time. Mm. And once I got out, the, I was out during the evening. My, my, their son was in the kitchen you know, doing, uh, anyways, well, what ended up happening is they ended up accusing me of poking my baby sister in the eye and giving me back to the hospital. That okay. was, and they said it was because I was jealous that she got adopted before me. Uh, there's a little more to that, but that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> Suffice it to say, I didn't. I wasn't uh, I wasn't jealous. I didn't really even understand what that was at the time. Right. Outside of physical possessions. <laughs> so let me just ask you this. Um, how did you age out of the system that you were in? Yes, you did. Um, I did. Uh, I, I aged out of this. Yes, I aged out of the system, but not that program. I got, I, right. I totally understand. And um, did you I, I assume that you have never um, did you ever find your biological family? I did. You did. Yes. Um, uh, only you, a couple of years ago. Say that again. Only a couple of years ago. Okay. And and have you spoken to them? I have. In fact, uh, my father uh, lives with me now. Wow, um, that's incredible. Um, and that's your biological father. Yeah. Um, can you just quickly talk about? Um, because I, I, I want to try and get back to that, but can you talk about what kind of effects all of this has had on you? Like, what does life look like for you today? Well, I did uh, detail that, too. Uh, I can't, first of all, I can't tell you the amount of fear I have at someone touching my feet. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's not, I, I, I couldn't even imagine I would be shocked if you were like, oh, yeah, that doesn't bother me. So, yeah. uh, of course. It makes me lash out by angrily, violently, defensively, because yes. that's how scary it is. Yes. What about mm -hmm. um, feelings of, like, um, abandonment and trust issues, anxiety? Yeah. Am, I, am I hitting on the right Absolutely. things? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I was really never be able to... Uh, fully put into words how I felt during those sessions, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Uh, they had me convinced I deserved it all. And yep. this is how I feel today. I'm yeah. stuck feeling like I'm worthless to the world. And all I see in the people around me is, is I look at people and I know that people like me. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm loved by people, but I don't feel it. And I can't, I can't seem to feel it because something in what they did made me just feel like I wasn't worth it. Sure. I think. Yeah. And so I, I suffer from a lot of major depression and PTSD. Mm -hmm. I, I deal with a lot of suicidal issues that I don't share with too many people. Mm -hmm. Uh. And it's just very, very lonely. Yeah. Because even though I'm around people, with what they did to me in the programs, I, I'm unable to actually believe that anybody really has feelings for me, or it makes me unable to want to put myself out. 
I'm just afraid of the world. And so my whole life revolves around being in my room. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the greatest thing for me. I, I, I feel like a couple of years ago, a switch got flipped and it all just hit me like a wall falling. Yes. A wall of bricks just all at once. And uh, I started having a lot of issues from it. I, I, I'm 38. I hadn't needed to see a psychologist or psychiatrist or therapist or medications since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And two years ago, since two years ago, I've had to go to the psych hospital three times. Yeah. And I'm on a handful of medications. Yeah. And well, although you know. I'm grateful for both of them. I just wish I didn't have to live today thinking tomorrow is going to feel the same way. And it's very difficult yeah. to live my life. Well, you know, it's not uncommon for an individual to get into their 30s and have a past like yours come to the surface. Um, and I, 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 one of the questions I wanted to ask is, why did you want to speak out and, and do this interview and, um, you know, I, I, I definitely understand that it's, it's difficult, um, but you did it and you, you were willing to do it. And I just would like to know what inspired you to want to speak and tell your story. People have died from the therapy I've received. Mm -hmm. um, one big note is a person by the name of Candace Newmaker. Okay. And I can't stand the idea, and that was after I received this treatment, and I can't stand the idea that I've received this treatment and people have died from it since then, and I'm just sitting here not doing anything to put a stop to it. it it's horrible to think that people do this in the name of therapy. And, and it, a big thing for me is the fact that attachment therapy has been rebranded. It's constantly being rebranded, and now the CTI industry is using it as a major part of their therapy sure. for years. Yes. And nobody knows that it's, uh, that it's based around attachment therapy, or almost nobody. Even the victims of the TTI industry have no clue that their abuse is coming from this. It's called attachment therapy. That's where it originated from, and we need to bring this to the front, too. Because as much as horrible things are happening to the teenagers and these programs, there's worse. There's a lot of bad stuff happening to the children before they reach there, too. Yes. And, you know, I, I, I applaud you for, for wanting to speak out because, as we st said at the beginning of this, is that, you know, sometimes we don't know that it's abuse until somebody tells us it's abuse. And, you know, I, I, it's so hard for me to say that what was done to you was therapy um, because it was more like torture. And um, I just think that, you know, you speaking out and telling this um, is, so compelling and it really is a testament to the individual that you are um and 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 the good heart that you have thank you it it is very important to me uh i just want to i just want to help stop it from happening again you know and I feel very frustrated when I see people or even animals that are being hurt and I can't do anything about it or don't know what I can do about it. In fact, it's even frustrating. It's why I took your opportunity to do this show. Yeah. Because I can write in the breaking code silence groups all I want. I can talk to people all I, uh, all I want on those. But unless I'm talking to people who can actually help me make the difference, yeah. help get the word out, I'm not doing a whole lot of good. I, and so that's why I really appreciate what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. And honestly, I, I, I'm going to tell you that I, you know, you might not 
you won't always know who you're helping, but I can tell you that every time you speak the words, you type the words, however you communicate it out, you are helping somebody. And I think that, you know, I, I'm really happy to hear that you're continuing to go to therapy um, because that will help you get over some of these issues. Of course, you know, um, we, we know that it doesn't all just go away, but, um, you know, I think add, add the word yet to some of your sentences. So when you say, you know, I don't necessarily feel love yet or anything like that uh, opens the door for the possibility that it, you know, down the road, this is what's going to happen. Um, I agree. It's from, you're right. I, I'm, I'm a very, I understand the logic. This is what's so hard for me too. And it's important. Because I was raised in hospitals and programs, I have a lot of hospital and program verbiage that I use. Yes. My thinking process is that way. My actions are, are a lot that way. And I completely lost my point. I'm sorry. It's okay. That's but all right. Because um, of this. Go ahead. I have, it has made me feel convinced, like it allows my mind to convince me that I really am unworthy. It uses it uses logic against me. Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. This is created by the programs and and the way they almost brainwash children into being obedient. Uh, it feels coercive, even though they make it seem like you got a choice. Because when you say you don't want to do what they want you to do, you get punished for it. But they always say you got a choice. Yeah. And so you can either take the abuse and get brainwashed to the point where you no longer even know it's abuse, or you can go sit in a timeout room or up in your room by yourself for the day or sit in a corner on on contract for a month or two. Well, I'm going to tell you this as we as we come to the end of this interview that worthiness is I, from the from the minute you take your first breath that your worthiness is there. Um, I'd like to say that you kind of hit like a little bit of a hiccup, but believe me, your worthiness is, is there. And it might take a little bit of time, but I, I, I not only see it, but I feel it as well too, just in talking to you. And uh, your level of empathy um, just simply demonstrates how much you matter and, and, and what a difference you will make in this world as an individual. And I, I think you're amazing. I think that, you know, for you to be here today, just living, and then add on top of that to sit here and go through an interview and talk about your story uh, with what took place to you is just simply a miracle. And, um, I have the utmost respect and I really just as we come to the end of this I just want to say thank you and um, please continue to speak out because you really are making a difference thank you very much and you, you got it I owe you just as much gratitude for putting this together 100% um, that's that's the idea behind working it together. So thank you so much. And that is the end of our show for tonight. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, these are some really difficult stories to tell sometimes. And, you know, it takes a lot of courage for somebody. And Josh certainly de demonstrated that tonight. So please continue to watch. Thank you. Thank you.